The United States Army just bet on a new $20 million tactical-directed energy weapon, and the bet came just in time for China to be the first victim. The escalating tensions in the South China Sea result in a believable, unavoidable, expected full-blown conflict between China and the United States. The dispute begins over territorial claims around the Spratly Islands, where China's artificial island bases, armed with DF-21D anti-ship ballistic missiles, threatened U.S. naval operations in an explosive fashion. Over the next few days, the U.S. responds with the largest aircraft carrier in the world, the $13 billion USS Gerald Ford, alongside a carrier strike group comprising 12 ships, including two $1.8 billion Arleigh Burke-class destroyers and three $1 billion Ticonderoga-class cruisers. China responds with its most experienced aircraft carrier, the Liaoning, accompanied by its strike group, eight 900 million Type 055 destroyers, later make their entrance too. The fighters which had been going to and from bases include 154th generation, carrier-capable J-15 fighters, and 65th generation, J-20 stealth fighters for China. For the United States, the fleet included 124th generation F-A-18 EF Super Hornets and 95th generation F-35C Lightning II. The conflict's early phase saw intense naval and air engagements with each side losing approximately 10% of their deployed assets, costing the U.S. $15 billion and China $12 billion in equipment. But it was only the beginning. As the weeks drew on, the conflict intensified. The U.S. Pacific Fleet, strong with 290 ships and 3,700 aircraft, faced China's People's Liberation Army Navy, boasting 350 ships and 2,800 aircraft. Submarines, more aircraft carriers, hypersonic missiles, and laser weapons joined the battle. The F-35s, due to its technological advantage and intelligence, was downing J-20s in a 3 to 1 kill ratio. Satellite imagery confirmed China lost 12 Type 05-4A frigates to attacks by Virginia-class submarines. However, China's numerical advantage and hypersonic missiles, like the YJ-21, sank two U.S. destroyers and heavily damaged the USS Ronald Reagan, which was summoned to back up the USS Gerald Ford Strike Group. China's swarms of agile drones was also perhaps the main threat to the U.S. Navy, though. The relatively low cost of these drones allowed China to deploy them in great numbers and forced the U.S. side to take them out with much more expensive air defense missiles. The economic toll was staggering. In not too long, the United States had spent $200 billion on operations, including $50 billion in munitions. China's costs were less than half of this, so while the U.S. was winning the battle in terms of damage to enemy, China could keep up their strategy far easier as it was far less costly. At this rate, U.S. stock was depleting quickly. They had to do something. Then, Admiral James Kilby, the chief of naval operations, did something incredible. Prior to the breakout of this conflict, he had kept a keen eye on a new, special weapon the U.S. Army was developing. The weapon is called the Integrated Fires Protection Capability, high-power microwave weapon. On the streets of the military, though, the weapon is known as Leonidas, Leonidas the Invincible. First entering the spotlight for its potential in 2020, Leonidas uses solid-state gallium nitride semiconductors to emit electromagnetic pulses that disrupt or destroy target electronics, offering a non-kinetic, cost-effective alternative to traditional missile defenses. It was unlike almost anything before, and it promised to tilt the balance of any war in favor of whichever side wielded it. Admiral Kilby charged Leonidas's manufacturer Iperus to build a naval version of the Leonidas. This was quite the ask, but to the Admiral's surprise, Iperus was well ahead of the Navy and had already built not one, but three naval versions of Leonidas. It focused its high-powered microwave pulses to disable drones, missiles, and other electronic systems by overheating their circuitry. Unlike kinetic interceptors like the SM-6 missile, which cost $1 to $2 million per shot, 
Leonidas was achieving a cost per shot of approximately $10. That's a drop of over a million percent. The system can engage single targets with precision in urban environments or neutralize multiple threats across a wide area, addressing the growing challenge of drone swarms. Its range, estimated at 1.2 miles, supports 360-degree coverage for base defense. Leonidas uses line-replaceable amplifier modules that enable scalability and resilience. Its open architecture integrates with existing command and control systems, and its unlimited magazine allows continuous engagements. Advanced waveform and polarization techniques target specific frequencies, enhancing lethality. At a time when laser weapons are expected to be the new, groundbreaking weapons to command victory for its operators, this high-powered microwave weapon has come out of seemingly nowhere to take charge, a long way from its humble beginnings. Epirus Incorporated, a defense technology company based in Torrance, California, privately funded Leonidas's initial development. In 2021, field tests demonstrated the ability to neutralize rotary and fixed-wing drones and even disable a ship's outboard motor, expanding its counter-electronics potential. By October 2022, Epirus integrated Leonidas onto Stryker vehicles. Epirus secured a $66.1 million Army contract in January 2023 to deliver Leonidas prototypes for the program as Leonidas outperformed its six competitors. In March 2025, Epirus announced production readiness. Four months later, in July, Epirus announced it had received a $43 million contract from the U.S. Army's office for delivery of two new and advanced second-generation Leonidas air defense systems and for the upgrade of older systems. The system was mounted on modified Zumwalt-class destroyers as these ships boasted 105,000 shaft horsepower. In the conflict, Leonidas's debut occurred during Operation Thunderbolt near Scarborough Shoal. Three Zumwalt destroyers, equipped with Leonidas, engaged a Chinese flotilla of 15 ships, including two Type 055 destroyers and a Type 075 amphibious assault ship. In 12 minutes, Leonidas neutralized 30 incoming YJ-21 missiles out of 37, an 81% interception rate. It also disabled eight Chinese vessels by targeting radar and propulsion systems, rendering them inoperable without sinking them. The engagement cost the U.S. $12,000 in energy, while China lost $4 billion in assets. The cost of victory numbers were now strongly in favor of the U.S. Over the following weeks, Leonidas continued to dictate the war's momentum. A Zumwalt used Leonidas to repel a coordinated Chinese attack involving 50 J-15s and 100 drones. Leonidas achieved a 98% interception rate, dazzling 49 aircraft and downing 95 drones, costing $20,000 in energy versus China's $250 million in losses. China attempted to counter Leonidas with electronic warfare, deploying Type 815 spy ships to jam U.S. systems. U.S. losses were minimal, two F-35s, Cs, and $50 million in base repairs. China's hypersonic missile stockpile was ineffective against Leonidas's rapid targeting. A single Leonidas system could engage 10 targets per second, compared to the three of traditional Aegis defense systems. Due to this, hypersonic missiles in Operation Dragon's Fury 2 were dazzled and misdirected. With its most unstoppable conventional weapons now being stopped, and no sign of victory in most practical scenarios, China began considering the Big Red nuclear button. And indeed they were. All authorizations had been granted, targets had been selected, command and control centers were secure, and they were ready to execute the launch of an entire army of medium-range, nuclear-armed ballistic missiles. One push of a button away from igniting a nuclear war with a nuclear-armed United States, the Chinese president paused to say, and I quote, If you want to end the ongoing conflict, subscribe to this channel and give this video a like right now. Okay, it's what we said. Anyway, do it for world peace. Thanks for watching.